And I'll tell you, it's all of the same resources. I've actually made a video on the resources which, which I personally use. And I'll, I'll try and you know, point some of the resources out in this video as well. You know, the resources are the same for everyone. It's how you use the resources that matters. If you do not know how to use them, you can get the best books in the world and you still won't score that perfect looking 170. In this video, I'm going to give you the exact blueprint I followed, everything from point to point, literally each and every step I did during my GRE math or quant preparation. What I want you to do is follow this to the end without thinking twice. You do not need any other video. You do not need to go to any coaching. You do not need any consultant. What I'm telling you here is proven to work. It will work for you if you actually put in the hard work. It requires a lot of hard work. I'm telling you this beforehand. So if, you, if you're someone who cannot put in the hard work, if you're someone who doesn't have the time, this video might not be for you, all right? So how you actually get the score of your dreams, how you get that perfect looking 170, which can not only help you getting the admin, because dude, you're going for an engineering degree or any techno technology based degree, any business based, degree or you could say any finance based degree, they are going to want to see that you can really, you know, you can crunch numbers, you're good with that, alright, and GRE is a very basic quant test and anyone can do that, anyone can really understand the basics of math and let me tell you how to actually go about it, even if you are a novice, I'll make sure that you go out of this video with something very productive, alright. Now, how I actually started my preparation, every single point I'm going to Put in, I'm going to detail. I personally scored a 168. I didn't score a 170. I, I wanted to put it out to you guys. I, I don't want to lie to you. So this is this is the actual score. But if you follow this video, you will get anything closer to 168, 170, anywhere in between, anything above 165. That's perfect. All right. Now, it depends on your hard work as well. All right. So first thing I want you to do is you want to join some groups, some WhatsApp groups, which are basically which have people who are discussing about the GRE, not just discussing, who are actively solving these questions. Now, you might not know if these groups exist. I'm telling you they do. And I personally know some people who were in the groups with me, who are preparing with me, who have actually taken the test with me, and it has went so well. All right. Now, how do you find these groups? Well, first, you can go onto Facebook and you can see if there are any WhatsApp groups for GRE preparation. Let me tell you, these groups will not be active all time of the year. These groups will be active, you know, when people are taking their GRE for their application process. So, you know, when you have your deadlines for the fall, let's say around January or around December. So two months prior to that, you know, these groups will be crazy. People will be solving questions day and night. They will be solving questions, you know, literally 24 seven, there is someone or the other who is putting out questions in these groups. Now, the advantage of these groups is not only do you see people solving them and you start solving these questions, but you see, you know, you, some people need a flow to go with. Some people need to make sure that, you know, uh, someone else is studying besides them. And this is something that can help you, you know, obviate that coaching. You know, you don't want to go to a coaching. This is the best resource. All right. And another, another important advantage, you know, you might not have some coaching material or you might be some it might be that you are very weak at some area. Let's say you are very bad at the statistics based questions and you've finished everything you have had, like every book, everything, every material you have seen. All right, now, how do you actually improve? Maybe you need some more material. Maybe you need some new questions. Now, these groups, you know, people might put in questions from their, their coachings and it happens a lot. It's very common. I've seen it. I've been with these people. I've actually, you know, prepared for my whole GRE alongside I had my own group, I actually, you know, created it. It's full right now, otherwise I would just provide you with the link. Plus it's not really active anymore. But you know, like I said, at those times of the year where people take the GRE the most, these groups will be active. You can you can take my word for it. Alright. Also, you might figure out, you know, that there are multiple approaches to solving a question because everyone there solves a question differently and you will see that alright, maybe I can use his approach and that seems so much better. This helps you in the long term if you are preparing for at least three or four months. Definitely go with it because you have no idea how much of a change it will bring in you. Alright, you will be able to tackle the hardest questions. Alright, that's one point for you now. Let's go on to the next point. And that is, how do you actually start preparing? What material to refer to? If you do not know the concepts, how do you actually go about it? Let me tell you how I personally started, alright? I had the Magush videos. I don't know if you have the portal or not, 
the videos are usually av available on Google Drive links. You can find them, you know, it's very, very easy if you're part of any WhatsApp group or Facebook group, it's easy to find them. All right. Anyway, you get these, you know, videos, they are sorted out by the folder, you know, algebra, arithmetic, coordinate geometry, all these, all of these topics. All right. What you want to do is you start from the first topic. All right. Let's say it's algebra, for instance. You go on to algebra, you, look, you watch the videos, watch every single video. All right, and you make the notes. Everything that you think that is important that you might forget, you have to make the notes. See, I actually made my notes in this this uh, you know register of mine. It has the words as well. But see, it, it's got probably you know 50, 60 pages of notes, and that is combined with something else. I'll tell you again. Uh, you know, some people wanted me to upload this, but it's actually a 250 page something uh, math you know workbook. But again, uh, I'll tell you how to take the notes as well. Right. Basically, in the notes, really, you want to put in everything that you do not know or you think that you will forget. All right. It can be formulas, it can be concepts. Depends on you. Right. You are different than I am. You have been exposed to a different level of math than I have. Something that I'm really, com you know, comfortable with might might be, you know, something that you might be uncomfortable with. So note everything down that you feel. All right. Now it's not just important to note these down. You also want to read these. And again, you know, once you've done this. Next comes the part where you practice. If you have the Magush portal, go with that. Practice questions online. All right, great. Otherwise, if you do not have the Magush portal, you can also go on and start the Princeton 1014, Princeton 1014 questions workbook for the GRE. It's a great resource, has a couple of mistakes, like, like you can say out of these, you know, uh, 1000 questions, maybe 700 are math, you know, and the 700 are math, but you know, you can say that one two percent of these might be wrong maybe just four or five you know though some questions are wrong because their answers are correct in the back but you know their option is marked wrong but don't worry about that start doing it it's a great book great resource to start your GRE preparation I don't want you to go on and start the five pound book straight away because that's the most important resource don't don't waste that I, I'm gonna tell you how to use each of the resources like I said so don't waste the resources until you know how to use them okay so you make the notes from the videos all right and then you start your preparation you start you know doing these questions now every time you finish a batch of questions every time you finish a chapter first of all do not take more than one day to finish a chapter even if it has got 50 questions or you know 70 80 questions try to do it in the same day most of the times it won't have that many questions but try to do it in the same day because there's a whole lot of material you want to cover up all right anyway you've done this one chapter now, it turns out that it had 100 questions. I'm just taking an example, you know, 100 questions. And seven of those questions you did wrong. And all of these other questions were right. What I want you to do is go on to the index of the book or maybe, you know, just take a piece of paper if you don't have the hard copy of the book. Write down the chapter name. And next to it, in the index or in the piece of paper, write down the percentage of questions you got wrong. This is very important. This is really, you know, don't underestimate this. So in my case, it would be since I got seven wrong out of 100, so 7% 7 of the questions were wrong. So I'll write down seven, 7%, seven you know. So that's something you should take care of. All right, make sure that you write it down so that you never forget it. Because trust me, once you keep on finishing the book, you'll never remember how, how bad you are at the topic. This helps you track that. And that is important because we'll work on that then. All right. Now, complete all of these sections like that, you know, finish the Princeton 1014 book, just like that. Take your time, you know, try to keep it as, uh, try to do it as early as possible. Do not take a lot of time, but, you know, make sure that you grab the concepts as well while you're doing it. You're not just making mistakes. All right. All right. Now, what you want to do is you want to start with the five pound book. After you've finished that material, you know, after you've finished everything, you want to start with the five pound book. And again, you know, pay special attention to the topics that you have had, you know, bad wrong percentage with, you know, 7%, whatever it is. If it goes anywhere above 10%, that's even worse. Make sure that, you know, the highest percentage ones are targeted the most and that you're paying the most attention to those topics because that is where you need the most improvement, right? So don't just go with, you know, blindly solving questions. Make sure that you read your notes. Make sure that you, you know, uh, all right, let me just tell you what I did when I faced wrong questions. And some, sometimes the questions are really great. You want to make sure that you never forget them and you actually practice them again and again and again. Now, you won't open the book again and again and again. So that's not going to happen. All right. You want to make sure that you note down the question. Now, 
again, like I said, you know, why I said this is a 250 page book or something, uh, because, you know, this is something that I've prepared over the time that I was, you know, working on my GRE. So it has the concepts and it has the, you know, questions that I was bad at. Please don't ask me for it because it's 250 or 300 page document. I won't be able to click so many pictures and, you know, append them. It's going to be hard. Anyway, so how I actually used to write them was I would write the question in black. I don't know if you can see it. The question in black. And then you'll basically see, you know, a mistake. I also note down my mistake. What part of it I did wrong? Where did I go wrong? So like, this is because I want to make sure that I do not make the same mistake again. So next time I solve it, I will, you know, hide the mistake. I will also write the answer, by the way. Uh, the correct answer, the approach I used, you know. Anyway, so uh, the approach I used or the approach, approach I found in the back of the book because this question was, of course, wrong. Anyway, so, uh, you know, I would write these down and then the thing is that, you know, next time I'll hide the mistake and I'll hide the answer as well. And then when I will do the question, I'll make sure that I don't do it wrongly. And if I do, I'll see that I make, made the same mistake or not. If I made the same mistake, there's a lack of concept. So you understand your mistake, right? You understand that there's a conceptual fault in your, uh, you know, pra practice in your really. And what you want to do is you want to tackle that. So you want to write something down about it or maybe you want to practice more questions like that. The basic thing is that you want to know your mistakes because the better you know your mistakes, the more you can tackle them. The best way to tackle your mistakes is to finally find them out actually, you know, know where you're going wrong. Is it just something that you did wrong in the heat of the moment or is it something that is a conceptual mistake and that is what I'm targeting by writing the mistake over there, all right? So, so important guys, everyone will have a different set of mistakes. This might not work for you like the ones uh, in my book, you know, in my uh, notebook, whatever I'm noting, it might not be important for you. But what might be important for you is your own hard work and how you write down your conceptual mistakes or whatever it is. All right. Great. Now, by the way, again, a, a great benefit of those WhatsApp groups is that you can send the question over there and you can see alternate approaches. All of these people might answer the questions. So you'll see their approaches and you'll really find out which is the best one. And you'll also see that, you know, sometimes people just think that the answer in the back of the book is wrong. So sometimes these people can help you on the groups as well. So, you know, it's a whole rounded process. Now you've done Manhattan Five Pound, by the way. You have to do that, you know, one chapter a day. It's a long book. Don't, don't take a lot of time in it though. All right. And if you need more material, you know, there's always the, you know, there's some good material out there, but, you know, don't waste this material, like I said, you know, one day, but don't rush into it. Make sure that you have read your notes, the ones that you'll prepare from the Magush videos or something like that. So make sure that you're keeping everything in check. All right. Now, um, if you're looking for more material, you can try the Kaplan online material, which is again, a good, good source. Uh, it has 10 practice tests each for the math and the verbal section. Again, uh, you guys, if you're on the group, you'll know how to get them for free. But uh, you know, I'm not really going into that in this video. <laughs> anyway, so you get those questions, you start solving them again, you know, they're good questions, timed, everything. So, you know, by the way, don't always use the timer when you're trying to improve, when you're trying to do the questions for the first time, you know, like the Princeton has, for each chapter, it has three sets, you know, you can probably try to do some without the timer because when you're trying to improve, the timer won't really help you. It'll be your enemy, not your friend. On the test, the timer is your friend. Now, if, after everything is done, you go on with the ETS book. Of course, ETS book, at this point, it should be really easy for you. You shouldn't be making any mistakes, you know. Even if you're making one or two, don't be worried. But most of the times, the ETS books kind of, you know, you, you'll feel that the quantitative section in the ETS books is really easy, all right? Apart from that, keep solving mock tests. Keep trying to, you know, do as many mocks as you can. Sometimes, you know, people tell me that they're not ready for the verbal part, but they're ready for the quantitative part. So how do they take the mock tests? It's simple. Just take the practice tests on the Kaplan online portal, which are really secluded sections. So section wise tests, you know, math section one, practice test one, something like that. It's only math. So you can try that. All right. That is the exact blueprint I followed. That is literally every single detail. I, I, I try to really, you know, write this down in the afternoon and I'm making this video at 3 a.m. in the night. I try to make sure that I do not miss even a single point. Now, what I want you guys to do really Please don't ask me for these notes because they might not help you at all, like, actually. But what I want you to do is do your own hard work. If you actually want that score, like I said, you know, at the beginning of this video, it will require hard work. 
but if you are someone who is really hard working this method will work for you just try it once all right anyway i am another ms prospective ms student by the way i'm mostly going to be going for fall 2019 session hopefully if you want to interact with me if you want to know how my you know everything process is going you can follow me on my instagram you can see regular updates about my process over there apart from that if you like this video do comment your best part your best you know strategy if you have something else for the people and you know it might be something that might help other people as well all right uh, i'll see you the next time and i hope you subscribe to the channel